Officer-involved shootings of African-American men have sparked protests across the country. The case of Michael Brown and Ferguson, one of the most well-known. And this Sunday marks one year when similar scenes made their way to Madison. On March 6, 2015, Tony Robinson was killed in an officer-involved shooting on Williamson Street. Since then, that officer, Matt Kenny, was cleared of any wrongdoing. The Robinson family has filed a civil suit against Officer Kenny and the city of Madison. But as NBC 15's Jalisa Irizarry explains, that's just one part of the aftermath. Robinson's mother, Andrea Irwin, and Madison Police Chief Mike Colval have played important roles over the past year. They have stood on opposite sides of a great divide when it comes to community and race relations. But they do have some common ground. They agree in order for them to see real change, that great divide needs to be closed. What do we want? We can no longer ignore what we know that is a problem. We had a 19-year-old African-American man slain last night. And to his family, and to his friends, and to this community, that is a loss. I don't have an option to hold him anymore. And I want you to know that I miss him and really love him. A loss the Robinson family still struggles with. I have my moments when we're trying to, to find our new normal. A new normal. That's what Andrea Irwin calls life without her son, Tony Robinson. Nighttime when it's quiet is the hard part, you know. So 60 seconds at a time. She hoped her son's death would spark change between police and the Madison community, but she's not satisfied with what she's seen. I don't see much different than it was a year ago. Frankly, as I've challenged our officers time and again, now more than ever, we want to do outreach. It's an effort, Madison Police Chief Mike Colval says, began months before Tony Robinson was shot. We do have to continue to mend fences and, and build bridges because there are clearly some gaps of mistrust that have occurred over the last year, and in Madison in particular. And we're not naive about that, but we look at it as a, as a challenge. A challenge Irwin agrees with. Until something on the, like that we make these steps happen, that, that, that there's not going to be much changes. And a challenge she's up for. I don't want to see any police officers hurt. I don't want to see any people hurt. It's like, it's, as long as we can start to bring down this fear and calm, calm our, our communities, both the police and the citizen, then we can start to move forward from what happened and to a better future. But it's a task both sides agree can't be accomplished alone. And we need to, the public to know that we want to work with them together in a comprehensive way to address so many of these compelling issues of the day. Cops cannot go it alone these days. I'm not sure we ever could. Wanting to make changes, wanting to have to make sure that this does not happen again and genuinely wanting that, then we'll be able to put everything into place. She knows that none of this will bring Tony back. <sighs> um... She just hopes to make things better. You know, I, I'm, I, I don't know if, for me, there could be a perfect medicine anymore. It's hard. It's very hard for me to see that. This city has so many good people that want a better future that I think that by being able to be open-minded and sit down with the people and have these conversations and, and actually listening to each other on both sides on what everyone in the communities needs, then we can be, a, like, be able to make these changes. Due to a pending litigation, Chief Colval declined to discuss specifics of the Tony Robinson case. However, he did point out several efforts the police department is making to improve community relations. In the past year, Colval has personally hosted several community listening sessions. He noted increased dialogue between the community and neighborhood officers, as well as officers assigned to schools. Irwin says they have a weekend full of events to remember Tony. She noted a celebration of his life on Saturday at the Harlem Renaissance Museum from 5 to 10. Jaleesa, thanks for that report. And Madison police say on March 6th, Robinson had attacked Kenny prior to the shooting. 
In May, the Department of Justice released dozens of documents detailing the incident. Three 911 calls were placed within five minutes prior to Officer Kenny's arrival on scene. One of them came from Robinson's friend saying Tony was tweaking from drugs and chasing people on the street. Video released by the DOJ showed the entire scenario from Kenny entering the house to the actual shooting. It all happened in 20 seconds. Now, Officer Matt Kenny has since returned to duty. He is working behind the scenes and will not return to patrol duties this year.